Meet Françoise. She lives in a flat in London, but she is unhappy. She likes her flatmate, but unfortunately, she's from France and he's from Russia. And they don't speak very good English. This is Leo. He lives in the same flat as Françoise, but he is unhappy. He's been having trouble learning English because the grammar is not as easy as it looks. The vocabulary is huge and the pronunciation is difficult. But now they've both discovered... Esperanto. How does Esperanto work? Well, let's have a look at the way we can make numbers, nouns and adjectives for a start. Uno. Two. Three. Kvar. Kvin. Ses, sep, ok, now, dek. For the numbers 11 upwards, you don't need to learn new words at all. You work with the existing words, the same as you do with the existing digits 1 to 9 and you put those in combinations to express 11, 12, 13, and so on. Dec uno. Dec du. Dec tri. Dec kvar. Dec vin. Dec ses. Dec sep. Dec ok. Dec nau. Du dec. Tri dec. Kvar dec. Kvin dec. Ses dec. Septec, octec, naudec, cent. So to get the number 999, which is 990 plus 9, you echo that in the words. Now cent, now deck, now. Now cent, now deck, now. Now let's turn our attention to making nouns and adjectives. The word dom means house, but to define it as a noun, as the name of something, we need to add a grammatical ending. We put o, domo, a house. Adding a j makes it domoi, houses. Here's blue, which is obviously blue. Blua makes it definitely an adjective, and bluei with a j makes it plural. So we can put those two together, blue-eye domoi, blue houses. We could even put it that way around, domoi blue-eye, it doesn't make any difference. One of the great things about Esperanto is that you can expand the vocabulary like this. Here's our word domo again, for a house. Now we can actually insert suffixes. For example, domego, which means a big house or a mansion. We could say dometo, which means a small house or a cottage. We could say domacho, which means a hovel or a horrible place. In Esperanto, if you've got a few word roots and the list of suffixes and prefixes you can put in, then you can create a whole family of words which may not have equivalents even in English. Let's take the word manj as an example. Manjo is a noun meaning a meal. Manja would be an adjective meaning something to do with eating. Manjego is a big meal, a banquet. Manjeto is a small meal, a snack. Manjeyo is a dining room. Ekmanji means to start eating. Formanji means to eat up. Ami. Oh, come on, Mr. Carter. 
Robert, this is getting boring. Get a move on. It means I love her. You'll notice that as is the ending of the present tense, and the she has an <laughs> N on the end. The machine, you love her. The machine, he loves her. She machine, she loves her. G machine, it loves her. Me machine, we love her. Ili machine, they love her. Oni machine, people love her. Oni machine, they used to love her. Oni machine, they will love her. The machine, you love me. So to make it into a question, we put two at the beginning. Chuvi machine, 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 and that would seem to be a good cue to go and see how Françoise and Leo are getting on. But before we do that, let's summarise very quickly what they discovered. They found that Esperanto is quick and easy to learn, partly because of its expandable vocabulary, partly because the pronunciation is phonetic, and because the grammar is totally regular. So now Leo can be happy. He can use Esperanto with Françoise and Françoise can be happy because she can use Esperanto with Leo.